Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In today's episode, we have Joshua Brown on the show, a bird photographer from Idaho who produces YouTube content and shares his wonderful wildlife images on Instagram. We talk about his passion for photography, what inspires him to travel and see new things, the pros and cons of his experience with video work, and how life in photography is about more than the camera. Welcome back to episode 53 of the Outdoors Photography Podcast, and today we have a very talented bird photographer and YouTuber on. Yes, we have uh, Joshua Brown on the show. Uh, thank you, Josh, for coming on the show. Uh, just let us know more about yourself, uh, where you're from, and your photography. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Henry. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, so a little background on me. I'm a, uh, I'm a bird nerd. I think that kind of sums it up. <laughs> episode over. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've uh, I've been doing uh, bird photography now for about uh, goodness since 2013. Uh, I've been a bird watcher since I was 20 years old. So we're talking uh, that's 26 years now. I'm 46, and uh, recently threw my hat in the ring to, uh, and started a YouTube channel about nine months ago, and uh, affectionately known as Bayou Josh. And I've just been having a blast, man. Been having an absolute blast. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming on. Um, So where where are you based currently? I am currently in Boise, Idaho, which is confusing to some people when they see Bayou Josh. Uh, Yeah, yeah, true. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you look on YouTube right now, I've got a whole, you know, hundreds of comments about why am I called Bayou Josh on this little <laughs> post I put today. But yeah, so I'm originally from Louisiana, um, not born, but raised from, you know, my whole life in Louisiana and uh, down on the bayou. I mean, mm. literally in my backyard was uh, the Tanchebahoa River, which, you know, formed a series of bayous. And so that's where I'm from, man. My So I've became known as Bayou Josh when I made my first Instagram post back in 2013 and it just stuck with me. Wow. So were you, did you do any shooting down in the Bayou back then or did you do that once you got to Idaho? Yeah, no. So I, so two th- I moved to Idaho in 2018. So my first oh, five years it. of photography was uh, all, all down in Louisiana. So pelicans and, you know, herons and copperhead snakes and alligators and uh, you know, anything you see down on those swampy areas, but not anymore. Now I'm mm-hmm. up in the mountains and uh, photographing elk and, and beautiful little mountain bluebirds and and the snow, which I'll be in that this weekend. So definitely a big change, to say the least. Very, very different. That's awesome. Yeah. You ever miss going back down there to the bay in Louisiana? Uh, I wouldn't say I miss it. <laughs> uh, where are you guys from are y'all I, I don't want to talk bad about a whole place if, if you guys are living in louisiana oh no but, I'm, I'm from louisville kentucky so. oh yeah, yeah cool. no, i'm from dane ohio awesome yeah so the midwest as everybody mm-hmm. calls it right yeah yeah no louisiana louisiana is a very unique beautiful place and if you're interested in wildlife and bird photography it is prime real estate i mean the bird mm-hmm. migration comes right through the the mouth of the Mississippi River there. Uh, every year we go for these fallout events that happen down in Grand Isle, Louisiana, which the birds would fly across the Gulf of Mexico from the Yucatan Peninsula and just literally, like you've seen in movies and documentaries, they would fall out on this island. Uh, so as far as opportunities concerned, there is nothing better for wildlife photography than Louisiana. But, you know, I'm a professional. I'm not a professional bird photographer, but I'm a, a work, right? I've got a job and I've got to take care of my family. And the economy is not near as good down there as it is up here in the Northwest. So I took a job opportunity and uh, it's been fantastic. It's been way better for our family. So I miss it in one sense, but not in the other. 
Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, what makes you stick to wildlife photography in particular uh, compared to like other outdoor photography genres? Well, uh, you know, I like landscape. Uh, are you guys are on Instagram. That's how we found each other. And mm -hmm. it, you know what happens is you kind of start down a path and people start following you because of what you post. And originally it was nothing but uh, birds. So, you know, I would post a picture of a landscape and I'd get crickets, like nobody would even like the image. So at one point I started a whole nother landscape Instagram account. Uh, but, you know, so you see what I post on Instagram. I do all the photography. I, you know, I love landscape photography. I love, uh, well, I don't want to say I love all photography. I don't like photographing people at all. It kind of drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I mean, like if I see beautiful architecture, beautiful landscapes, I love uh, snapping those shots. But, you know, I'm also, I understand that people follow me for the wildlife and bird photography. So I just give them what they want. You all, <laughs> you all know how that works. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for that's, sure. That's true. You kind of have to almost fit the mold in a way too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Were you kind of a, a birder before you started photography or was it just kind of all come naturally once you started? No. So I, so in my dad and my grandfather were both, uh, Audubon society, you know, they had a bound of renown known to be bird guys. So, you know, at a very early age, I was introduced to bird watching. I'd go on these bird tours down in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Uh, and, you know, five or six ladies, older ladies would get paired up with me and I'd take them on tours of the island. Um, so from, like I said, from 20 years old, I, I had been bird watching and which is fantastic for bird photography because you figure out where all the birds are your first 15 years and then you just go photograph them when you can finally afford a camera. So it, it's been part of my life for my entire adult uh, existence. Yeah, that's a, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I kind of been the same way too. It's like I kind of got into the birds first, but it was just more of like a curiosity. And now it's like I'm just kind of like all in, you know, and I'm getting the frame filling shots or trying to at least and everything too. Yeah, and did so you you carried around a set of binoculars before you got that camera, right? And did just try to annotate what you saw. Is that the way you did it? Uh, no, actually, I, I started with like a seventy five to three hundred. Like a, like a small telephoto zoom lens. I don't even think I had binoculars when I started out, but I was just trying to get like the closest, you know, documentation shot and just go from yeah. there. Yeah. Well, wow. So you, you started with a camera. So if you start with a, a set of binoculars and you go to a camera, it's easy to see a bird in the binoculars, but to get a picture is a whole nother story. And mm -hmm. you, you guys know that. I mean, it, it kicked my butt. I was like, why yeah. do all my pictures suck? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, they were horrible when I first started, but, uh, but yeah, after a lot of time and effort, you start figuring it out and try to get a little more artistic and, and mm -hmm. it's, man, I get obsessed with it. I don't know about you guys, but I get absolutely obsessed. Yep. I, I definitely agree. Um, I, I do both like wildlife and landscapes and, um, I find that wildlife is just like a, a different level of obsession. Like it's just kind of like a, a constant chase. I don't know if you've had that experience, but always kind of looking yeah. for the next subject. Well, yeah, my part of my theme in life, and, and I cover this a lot on the YouTube channel is enough is never enough. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it, you know, one of my um, earlier videos was, you know, here we go again, it's, it's six in the morning, and I'm going to photograph a bird that I've photographed a 1000 times. And, you know, and I don't know why I can't explain to someone why I get up every year. Uh, you know, sometimes 30 times in a month to go photograph the same exact bird. I, I mean, and it doesn't bore me. I just want a different pose. I want to get a little closer. I want different action. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky I've got a wife that tolerates my, my stupidity sometimes, but, um, I am, I mean, it's, it's addictive personality or something. I just, I got to do it. And I am obsessed mm. and wildlife does that to me. Yeah, I mean, I think there's much worse addictions out there. I think you know, it's a constructive addiction, <laughs> yeah. and it's a good thing to put your time into, honestly. Yeah, not a, I, I could probably have a cheaper addiction is what she would argue. True, true. I, but... <laughs> yeah, fair enough there. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, right. 
<laughs> yeah, but isn't that the case though? No matter what you want to do, um, you know, if you want to just get into it, you can go buy like like for photography, you, you can go buy a five hundred dollar used camera, and and what I started with is a seventy to three hundred as well, and you're you're under a thousand bucks, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you're not spending too much money, but if you want to get twenty percent better. Um, that last 20% is a hundred times more expensive. Yep. Uh, you know, you start getting into those, you know, Z nines and 600 millimeters and, and then, then you want to start recording it and you got all the recording gear and the, the microphones and external recorders and then the software. So it, it's just a rabbit hole that, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it, but I, I have to admit that there are opportunity costs that I have to taken a consideration on it on, from time to time. Yeah, that, that right. definitely makes sense. And I've definitely found that as well. Um, I mean, how with your gear, are you like, are you a very technical person? Did you come from any technical background or was that just kind of something that came along with your photography? I, you know, I don't know if I want to call it a technical background. I mean, I'm a project manager. I, I write contracts and you know manage costs and schedules and you know, negotiate with developers and, you know, it's just boring. I, I'm boring myself talking about it, but, but, you know, it's construction, it's building big buildings mm-hmm. and I do get obsessed with the details. Um, and I can't just half-ass do anything. Can I say ass on your podcast? Sure. I can't, sure. I can't just half-ass anything. I have to, I have to be a hundred percent no matter what I'm doing. And um, so technical background, I don't want to say I was completely technical, but when I got into photography, trust me, I know what every button does and everything on the menu does because I just dive into it so deep and, Mm -hmm. and so obsessively. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've even recommended before, like when people first get their cameras, because they'll ask me, like, you know, what camera's good, what's bad. I'm like, eh, do your own research and everything. But the one thing I will, the one tip I say is that, you know, you should sit down and read your your new manual like a book, like just flip through it and really kind of absorb everything you can get from it. I feel like that's just really important. Indeed, yeah, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think like really like makes you strive to get these more shots, better shots? Like what do you really think is the reason why? Is there any like particular like motivation behind that or just simply to get the shots? Um, oh man, that's so funny. I, I, I answered this exact question yesterday and, and I, every time I hear it, I've got a different flood of thoughts that come into my mind. And what I always go back to is, you know, when I used to just do birding, when I walked around with a set of binoculars, I'd come back from a trip and I would say, man, you're not going to believe what I saw. Right. And I have to explain to them what it was that I saw. Um, And then with photography, you go out and you say, you're not going to believe what I saw. And then you pull up your phone where you downloaded it onto your little web page and you show them the picture. Right. So there's a completely different, um, with you and the person that you're sharing the story with and and to top it off to take it a step farther you want to tell the story in such a way that you want people to get excited about it too does that make sense when I say that like you want to Mm -hmm. the excitement that you feel you want the other person to feel it so I've always had that um that drive to just kind of bring people along with me and and because because I feel so excited about it, I want other people to feel it too. That's why I couldn't stop at just taking pictures. I had to, I had to start the YouTube channel, and I wanted people to see what the full process was like, and and then I wanted people to know what was going through my head as I'm standing out in the middle of a field for the 90th time in one spot trying to get a bluebird. You know, so um, it's it's just my internal desire to just share with people to bring people along and, and hope they get to experience what it is that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like people can really pick up upon your passion for something like this. Like they just really, it radiates with them and you can really feel that like connection, I guess, you know, not to get too hippy dippy, but you know, it just like it really exemplifies itself. I think when you really uh, share it with people. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so because it's a beautiful hobby, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that. Why do you guys do it? I mean, we could we could go um, collect knives or or you know or plant flowers in the garden. I mean, there's so many things that we could do with our time. 
Mm. But this is just such a beautiful existence, right? I mean, this entire world is just waiting to be discovered, to mm. um, to be documented, and and there's and there's so many of us out there, right? And there's so many talented people. I'm so glad. I mean, it just in the the five, I'd say the last five to seven years, you know, with Instagram really taking off and, and uh, you know, even a lot of these other social media platforms, it seems like it's spread like a wildfire. Um, you go to Yellowstone or Grand Teton National Park now, you see cars lined up on the side of the road like never before. And there's a 600 millimeter lens sticking out of every window. And, you know, it used to be you'd see five guys like that 20 years ago. Now, now everybody owns a camera and they all want to experience um, this beautiful hobby. And I think social media has a huge part in that. And I love it for it. I love that we can all share that experience with each other. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's how we, all three of us pretty much met was, yeah, social media. And it wouldn't have happened sure. otherwise because we live mm-hmm. out, you know, different states and everything. So, um, yeah, I definitely agree. It's very, it's very beautiful how it, you know, really connects us all too. Agreed. Yeah, it, it brings. Well, think about this. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Henry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it brings a huge new level of like inspiration too. Um, you know, just like kind of opening your viewpoint of what you could even capture out there. Absolutely, and 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 to take it a step farther. 15 years ago or 20 years ago, if you had a camera and you went out and took pictures of birds and you brought it back home, you basically had to wait for someone to come visit you to look through your photo album to see your pictures, or you had to put them in your briefcase, bring them to work and show the five people in your circle of influence at work that you deal with, or you submit them to a magazine and hope that the editor will publish it. But today, like this morning, I put an image on Instagram that I took, you know, Sunday evening and within an hour I had 870 likes and I had 260 comments and people were telling me how wonderful it is. I don't care who you are. That feels good, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's to be able to um, have that instant feedback. That's why social media is so popular. We all kind of hunger for that. We all have a desire to be recognized and feel like we're doing something good or great even so yeah i i don't feel bad about any of these social media platforms i think they're wonderful if used right and i think they've changed the way we look at the world a hundred percent oh yeah definitely yeah but yeah it's also like you said earlier the excitement of sharing it and like sharing the shots like i know i'm always you know looking forward to you know sharing them and everything with other my followers or other friends and everything too yeah so wonderful so wonderful i love it yeah, I feel like yeah. just the the photography community, um, you know, there's some communities out there, um, you know, can be pretty toxic, but like the photography online community, you know, there's bad apples, but overall, it's very welcoming. And, you know, even if there's bigger creators, they'll reach out to smaller ones. And I, I feel like it's just very accepting. Indeed, I, I yeah. 100% agree. And, and it just speaks to the nature of the people that um, go out and enjoy this. Um, mm-hmm. It's not, you know, there used to be kind of a toxic thing. And I say toxic and forgive me for, you know, blanket saying that, but like photo competitions, um, mm-hmm. you, you see in less and less of that now from my perspective, because it's not about who's the best, right? It's about how can we bring up everybody? How can we all share in this experience together? And, um, you know, it used to be you'd send in those pictures to magazines and you vote on it and all that stuff. And I'd never participated in any of that because I always felt like it was more than just who's the best, who's, you know, you know, we learn from each other now. We can reach out. And, and, and that's another thing. It used to be you'd see this picture in a magazine and it was completely fantastic. And if you wanted to talk to that guy, you'd write a letter and send it to him in the mail and hope he responds to you. Um, you know, today, within 10 seconds, we reach out in a direct message and you can say, hey, man, I just want to let you know I was scrolling to your through your feed. Your images are fantastic. Thank you for sharing. It's so inspiring. Keep what keep doing what you're doing. And he'll respond within 30 seconds. You mm-hmm. don't that that type of connectedness. Um, it, it brings out the best in us. I really believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the technology has really broke down the barriers uh, where people, yeah, can access a lot more and, you know, connect. A lot more easily, like you said. Yeah. Indeed. Definitely. Yes. 
All right. So maybe I want to shift gears here and we can talk more sure. about your YouTube channel. Um, so for anyone that hasn't seen your videos, um, you do lots of these like in the field videos, but they're, they're very atypical. Like you do these like voiceover style uh, kind of uh, production values and they're really cool. They're really cool. Um, I so maybe it. like, yeah. Um, so yeah, is there any reason maybe you kind of tend towards this more philosophical uh, kind of approach with your videos? <laughs> philosophical yeah you know somebody the other day called me the the bird therapist um <laughs> yeah i you know gosh you're gonna make me get all emotional here so you know we i'm a i've got kids you know 25 year old a 20 year old daughter and i've been married to my wife for 26 years now um and i've gone through a lot you know i mean you you don't stay married that long without going through some uh, you know, tough times and good times. And, um, you know, and when I took up this hobby, it it was kind of therapy. It was, it helped me kind of, um, I guess the word is gain perspective. It, it, it helped me see the world a little differently. But there's a lot of emotional things involved in just being in this hobby, right? Like we we spend a lot of money and a lot of people have emotional attachment to their money. So now you've spent this money and you expect to be so much better when you go out there, but you still have to wake up early. You still have to get the right light. You still have to find the subject. You still have to make sure you have the right background. And, you know, we get frustrated. I know that I have. In the past, it, it wasn't always an easy hobby for me. And I feel like I wasn't alone in that, right? I, I feel like there's probably a lot of us, and I speak to mostly men because I know how I feel, but I'm sure there are women out there that feel the same way, that there's more to this hobby than just pointing a picture. It's our escape from you know, something crazy going on at work. It's our um, thing that connects us with our wife when we're out in the field where we get to share in these beautiful moments. It's something that we get to bring our children along to experience. And, and then the other thing is, is, you know, when it comes to time, you, you really start valuing your time out in the field when you're trying to make something beautiful. So then it becomes about time management and managing your expectations. So the reason I went in that direction is because there are a lot of very talented photographers out there. And there's a lot of talented YouTubers that take amazing images that point the camera at themselves and they tell you how they do it. And they say, if you just put your camera at these settings and go out there, you'll have the same success. And that's wonderful. But they don't talk about the emotional connection that is this beautiful hobby. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? I mean, I, I, maybe I'm alone in it, but I, it doesn't seem to be because I get, you know, hundreds and hundreds of comments of people saying things like, wow, man, you're, you're in my head. I was thinking the same thing. And um, I think we're all just kind of the same. We're all just trying to figure it out. And and I wanted to speak to that. So that's why I went that route. I just felt like it connected us a little more. I, th I think that's great. And I, I've definitely had the same experience. And, you know, it's very therapeutic. And um, I think, you know, despite, you know, living in different states or even different countries, you know, our nature photography, when we go out, it's always so similar. We have the same you know, feelings of uh, negative feelings and positive feelings. So I think you're Absolutely. you're really the first kind of pioneer in this kind of kind of a new style of filming. And I think it's really cool how you're kind of introducing that. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. And and it's more than just pointing the camera at something and shooting. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want to get too much in the production value, but I spend hours and hours crafting the story. You know, the I don't want to say wax poetic, but, uh, you know, I try to capture those feelings in such a way that they're relatable to everyone that when they hear mm -hmm. it, um, they feel exactly what I was feeling. And I hope that doesn't get lost, but um, I, I, I just care. I care about the hobby. I care about um, the people that watch. When I'm making those videos, I'm thinking about seven-year-old dad on the other side. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about the 69 year old guy who just retired and this is his hobby and, mm -hmm. and the emotions he's having going through all this. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate you saying that. It really means a lot that, that you notice that. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I think like, at least I've, I don't know if you find this, but when you're, when you're out in the field, you think a lot, like that's kind of my most contemplative moment moments when I'm out there. 
is kind of just thinking it's not just about photography, you know, just about all aspects of your life. I feel like you kind of translate that through your videos um, in some way. Absolutely. I mean, that's where we work things out, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing more valuable than being alone with your thoughts. Um, you know, you can listen to all the, the talking heads out there and uh, that's wonderful. You know, you can get some fantastic advice, but, you know, when it comes to, you know, trying to deal with that bad apple at work or dealing with the fact that maybe you took on too much debt or, or maybe you are dealing with the fact that um, you're trying to contemplate a new job somewhere. There's no better place in the world to work that out than on the side of a hill looking at a lazuli bunting or a, you know, or, or a squirrel for that fact. So it's therapy. It's 100% therapy. Yeah, I think it's great because you're, like you said, your videos really touch upon like almost like universal things like emotions and just everyday life things that um, I feel like people that maybe not even so much interested in birds or wildlife or photography even might, you know, still identify with your videos too. Yeah, I hope so. And, and you know, then you get into the YouTube. Um, how do you get that out in front of as many people as you can? And I'm trying to figure that out because I, I feel like it does kind of transcend just the hobby and so if you got any advice on how i can reach more people on youtube let me know because <laughs> it's a well i tell you what if you want to do youtube you better get ready to work i mean it's mm -hmm. not easy mm -hmm. it is a grind man I, I told myself if i do this in a year and i don't have a thousand subscribers i'll hang it up because people just won't like me um and, and i'm okay with accepting that uh but it's been crazy right i mean I, i've Kind of, it's kind of blown my mind a little bit how the following has grown, and and I had to tell myself at the beginning. I full disclosure, okay, I had never flipped the record button on the back of my camera until oh, wow. February of last year uh, of this past year. So, so you never even took ago, wildlife clips or anything before that. Nothing, wow. literally mm -hmm. until um, I'd say maybe the middle of February of 2021 um, is when I flipped that switch. And, oh. and so what I decided and I committed to is I was going to make two videos a week, not because I wanted to get a lot of videos out there, but because I wanted to learn as fast as I possibly could. And I'm going to tell you, it was, it was a frantic hot mess. I made so many mistakes. I watched some of that stuff and I'm keeping it on there just because it's funny, right? Like who was this idiot? But, um, but the key was to learn as many mistakes and, and learn from those mistakes as fast as possible and correct them. And it wasn't until about four months into it that I felt like I kind of understood what I wanted to do. And that's when I switched to those full, um, fully narrated videos. And then occasionally I'll, I'll point the camera at myself and, and talk a little bit, but, um, but it took me, it took me several months to figure that out. That's when awesome. you say like mistakes, do you mean like just like with filmmaking or is it like something else? Oh, you name it. You name it. Uh, just first of all, understanding how to tell a story. Uh, you know, I, God, I could spend an hour talking about that. I mean, I, I, I was trying to reinvent the wheel like I knew what was better. And then I then I tried to be a Casey Neistat and then I tried to be another guy and and then I just decided to be myself. So that was the first mistake is not just being myself. Uh, the second, you know, of course, is a, a whole compilation of technical mistakes. I didn't understand audio at all, and I'm still trying to figure out audio. Uh, I didn't understand that, you know, when you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you really should keep it around 50 to 60 um, on your shutter speed so that you mm -hmm. don't get crazy, weird vibrations and stuff in your footage. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, how all those filters worked and, you know, those variable filters. So, I mean, technically there were tons. And then I had to learn how to edit all of that. Man, I'd, I feel like if I kept doing this another 50 years, I'd never learn everything there is to know about editing. Mm -hmm. uh, I learn a new button every day I get into, <laughs> you know, Premiere Pro. Yeah. That's the most confusing place in the world. Whole nother and, world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, so you think photo editing people, is hard. You've never seen video editing. Yeah, let alone that. Absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, every every minute. So if I have an eight-minute video, that's an hour to an hour and a half worth of editing for every minute. 
um, not to mention gathering the footage, not to mention getting the sound right, not to mention trying to figure out what song I want to put on it. So yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. I mean, I, I questioned what the hell I was doing there for a while. Like, is this worth it? And now I'm starting to get a little better at it, but um, it's painful. But yeah, so I, I try to make as many mistakes as possible and get them out of the way and, and learn from them. And I keep a journal, you know, to try to go back and reference. And of course I've got a video journal now. I can look back on things and say, yeah, that worked and that didn't work. And mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, I think that's, I, that's I, a great attitude to have there. Yeah, yeah definitely. It. Yeah. It's yeah, definitely, so, yeah, nice to look back and everything and see your like maturity and growth in your, your creative process and everything too. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you write so the scripts fun. for your voiceovers as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a crazy process. So, so we talk about being out in the field and being in your head. Um, when I go out into the field, a lot of times I don't know what it is I want to say, right? Like I've started the weekend many times, more times than not. I start the weekend with like, what am I going to talk about this week? And while I'm laying in the dirt and getting sand in my pockets, I'm thinking, you know, I start thinking about um, managing my expectations. I start thinking about uh, you know, whatever principle I want to teach for the week or I want to talk about or whatever I'm dealing with for that week. And then the magic happens in the edit, right? I've got all this footage. Then you've got to kind of organize it in such a way that um, kind of makes sense, you know, it flows. But then as you're watching it, you start getting even more emotions and feelings when you put certain music to it. And then I just start writing a script over that uh, video and start telling the story of how I felt for that week and how it all made sense to me and how it all came together. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a growing process. It doesn't just, I don't just write a script and go out and try to shoot it. And I probably should like storyboard things and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but that's just not the way my mind works. Interesting. That's yeah, a great so approach. Do, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you, uh, you have a lot of like, um, you know, footage from, you know, various outings and, you know, different wildlife encounters. Is that all from that weekend um, in your video or is that kind of pulled uh, from different parts? Yeah. Don't make me open the curtain too much. Um, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. Like this weekend I've got, I probably took two and a half hours worth of footage. So I've got, I definitely have enough to to make a, a video to make an eight minute video but some weekends i'm like that didn't work out the way i planned and throughout the week i might go back out and do some other b-roll or something that didn't exactly happen while i was out in the field um mm-hmm. so does it happen within the week yeah typically 95 percent of all the footage comes from within that last six days uh, but it's not always it's not always from that one outing I, like my my initial goal is to go out and take pictures of birds Mm -hmm. and so while i'm getting pictures of birds then i'll step back and say all right well let me try to tell a story with that then i might reenact it and take footage of myself pretending to take pictures of birds you know what i mean so it's Mm -hmm. it looks look like a goofball out there sometimes i'm sure people pass by like what is this idiot doing but um but you gotta tell the story right Uh that's that's theater a little bit do you ever find yourself uh, missing out on shots because of your video production or do you find oh, it? Oh, hell yeah. Enhancing? Yeah. All oh, the okay. time, all the time. Um, it, but, but maybe I got the video footage of it. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there, there is a, there is a cost. That's why mm-hmm. I try to prioritize photo first and try to make sure I get some good images, but I'm telling you many times, just as I'm like, all right, let me get set up for the video now the bird will do something cool or the the bear will come out and, you know, pull a limb down or something, you know, so it's, or the elk will finally walk into the water like I was hoping he would do. So that happens uh, regularly and it, it aggravates me, but that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't get just like in photography, you don't get every shot you want. I mean, just now sometimes it's video instead of, instead of uh, pictures. Do you ever like set aside the video work and just focus solely on photography? Yeah, yeah. So I, I do that a lot sometimes. Sometimes I'll go out on a Saturday and never turn the video camera on and just try to get some pretty images and then spend all day summer, uh, the rest of the day, Sunday, trying to recreate what was happening to get my B-roll. So yeah, that happens. That certainly happens. 
Yeah, I like that spontaneous approach, though, where you just kind of like, it is what it is if you can't really get the shot or the video, but like you still just kind of roll with the punches almost and just see what the day unfolds to be like, too. Yeah, because that's the story, right? That's the way we shoot. Um, when you go out to photograph anything, do you script your day out? You know, most of us don't. We no. just go out to try to yeah. have no, a good not day. Really. Do you target yeah. species or anything, or so. is it just kind of see what you see? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I'm i very careful not to, you know, have too many expectations to where I get disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm flexible, but I don't go out completely blind. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been here four years now, so I have four years worth of a, a backlog of, of images. So I know where I found things at certain times of the year. So I'll, I'll reference my catalogs and say, okay, so December 6th last year, I was at this park and there were hooded mergansers. I'm going to go see if they're there again. So yeah, that, that's kind of the way my plan works. And if I'm lucky, they're there. And if I'm not there, there'll be something else and I'll photograph it. Yeah, I'd say that's the best approach. Yeah, you have like a loosely fitted plan of like what you expect, but you're not really like dead set where it's like, if it does not incur, it's like you're disappointed too. So yeah, that's a yeah. really good balance to strike there. Yeah, I, I feel like it is just because my personality works that way. Because I, I, my early photography, I did think that I was going to go out and get a bald eagle every time I went out and I'd come home <laughs> disappointed a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to learn to, you know, manage my expectations and and that that's healthier. That really is healthier. Um, yeah. And I just don't have time. I don't have time to go out. That's what my video is about this week is time, by the way. I just don't have time to go and hyper focus on one species. If I mm -hmm. go to a spot and what I initially wanted to get isn't there, that's fine. I, I move on to something else. I'll get in the car and I'll go somewhere else. Um, but I used to go home kicking and screaming, you know, talking about how much I hated photography when I'd go out with too much of a tight plan. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself like switching on a fly to like landscapes if like the wildlife doesn't work out or vice versa? Oh yeah. Yeah. All the time, especially when you're up in the mountains and yeah, you're trying to find uh, you know, a pine siskin over 800,000 acres. <laughs> Sometimes that just doesn't work out. doesn't work yeah. out. Uh -huh. and I think in the beginning, nobody really tells you that. Um, so you, you really get disappointed, like you said, and you really got to temper those expectations. Indeed. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like really the best photography moments for me, at least if I, I look back on it is really the spontaneity. Like I'm just, I'm walking through a forest and something shows up that you would just, you know, wasn't on eBird, wasn't on Instagram. It just kind of shows up. It's kind of the best for me. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Where do you see, like, going back to your YouTube, where do you see that channel going in the future? Just more of, like, what you've been doing, or is there some something you want to try out, maybe? Like, experiment with a video or something? Uh, just keep being myself. I, I don't want to, uh, I, you know, I want to grow as a, as a, technically, I want to get better at um, doing certain things, but uh, I don't, like, I don't want to review gear a lot. I know a lot of people always ask me to. I don't, um you know, I don't want to do the vlog thing where I walk around and talk at a camera. The only thing I see growing is, you know, my, my circle of, of places to visit. There's so many beautiful places up here. I just want to see more of it. So that's what I see growing is my opportunities to get out and see more. Uh, other than that, it's going to be the same format moving forward. It's, you know, bring you along with me, tell you the story and, and hope to inspire you to get out and do some of it yourself. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And it works for you. Yeah. It's very authentic. I can tell. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do you do a lot of like uh, road trips on your weekends to locations around Idaho or are you more kind of based in your town? For photography? No, no, I'm on, I'm on the road every, every weekend. Oh, nice. uh, this weekend I'm driving three hours North to uh, McCall. It's a mountain town uh, North of Boise, Idaho. So I'll be there all weekend. They just had a huge snowfall. Um, you know, I five hours away from East Grand Teton National Park and then Yellowstone six hours away. Uh, wow. You know, it, Stanley, Idaho is three and a half hours away. So I'm always on the road. Uh, I plan on making some trips out to Oregon this year, which is about 10 hours away. So, yeah, I, me being at home for the weekend, that's a rarity. I, I'm typically out and about for sure. 
Yeah, and I've I've seen your uh your your famous uh like white sprinter van in your YouTube videos. It's uh <laughs> seems like a great rig yeah. to travel around in. I've spent a lot of hours in the back of that thing sleeping and waiting to wake up in the morning to get a stupid bird. Yeah. It's I mean, that's awesome. I think it really gives you that. It's not as comfortable edge. as it looks. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome though. Yeah, is there any favorite locations you've been to so far in your travels? Um Stanley, Idaho. Uh, look that place up. If you don't know anything about it, look up the Sawtooth National Forest in Stanley, Idaho. That place is like a religious experience. The mountains, the mountain air, uh, all the mountain lakes. The uh, and it's not such a tourist trap like Yellowstone and and the other places. And there's not as much wildlife, but it's just so it makes you feel so small and. I love that. You know, it makes you just kind of forget about yourself. It feels like the real wilderness compared to some of these other national park areas. That's my favorite, hands down. And I hope to discover other favorites. I'm sure there'll be some more favorites in the future, but Stanley is very high on the list. Love it. Yeah, honestly, I mean, you you never think about Idaho as like a, a good photography location, but it seems like you've really kind of picked a great spot, kind of a central location kind of get to a lot of cool places yeah people keep telling me to stop telling everyone because so many people are moving here now it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it, you can ski you know in the winter time there's like 35 40 ski resorts in the state there's um you know there's white more white water rapids and rivers than anywhere in the country right here in oh, wow. idaho uh there's yeah. more mountain ranges and the, the highest concentration of mountain ranges in the lower 48 is right here in idaho with the largest uh, wilderness, the Frank Church Wilderness, right here in Idaho. Huh. Uh, this place is it's magnificent. And prior to four years ago, I wouldn't even know where it was on the map. Um, it's <laughs> I'm so glad we moved here. It changed our life. 100% awesome. changed our life. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I haven't been there. I, I stay really local to Ohio, but I know Henry's, you've gone out like different mm -hmm. i think you went to yellowstone just this earlier this year was that right i have Some not been places. to yellowstone i have been to yosemite though but uh yellowstone's oh, definitely on the list yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yosemite's no uh that's a destination place right there oh it's Goodness. amazing you saw yeah. el capitan and all that oh uh, yeah oh yep. gosh I, that's mm -hmm. on my list i gotta get there it is great i i will tell you the wildlife at least when i went I maybe saw one bird and one deer but the landscapes <laughs> it is the landscapes yeah. are just exceptional yeah, I Amazing. heard the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. I heard um, Glacier National Park is kind of, I mean, it, it's not a secret, but compared mm -hmm. to Yellowstone and, and Grand Tetons, it's much more wildlife. Like oh, yeah. Double the concentration of mm -hmm. bears and elk. So, and then I have some family that go. live up there and they, they love it. It's, uh, it's supposed to be beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, I got to go. 10 hours away. I got to make the trip. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That'd be Make a weekend cool. out of it. Yeah, it's yeah a exactly. good video Just content. Just in the too. van. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what's like one of your most memorable stories from out in the field or experiences? Ah, uh, yeah. So I, I'll tell you kind of a funny one. Um, and it's in one of my videos. We went to Yellowstone. Me and a friend of mine, Race, uh, great photographer, only started about a year or so ago at wildlife, and he's already just fantastic. Uh, but we went to Yellowstone together and. Uh, I was looking for bears. I'd never, I mean, I'm a grown, grown ass man, never seen a bear in my life. And uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm the bear stalker. Come with me. We'll find a bear. And sure enough, you know, we found some, some black bear and I had the opportunity to photograph them. But one of my favorite parts of that story is that I'm such a bird nerd that if you watch that video at the very end of that video, you'll see, you know, this picture of a common uh, American robin that I was intently photographing. And if I was to zoom out of that image, you would see directly behind that Robin was that black bear. So, I, I, you know, I'd never seen a bear before in my life. And here it is my first opportunity to photograph it. And I'm photographing a common old American Robin right there in the tree. So that, that just goes to show you how much I love birds. But uh, there are countless experiences at Yellowstone National Park that have just taken my breath away with elk crossing the stream with the, you know, the, the fog rolling in and, uh, you know, bald eagles swooping down to grab a fish and, 
um, it feels like every time I go out, I have an experience that is once in a lifetime because it really is right. I mean, that was my moment mm -hmm. in my life where I got to experience that for myself. So endless, I have, I can write a book about it and maybe one day I will so many experiences. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Every, every experience leaves you with something unique, even if you go to the same place over and over again or photograph the same species. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Totally agree. Yes. 100%. I have to ask, do you have a, a favorite bird or maybe favorite type of bird? I get asked that a lot. Um, and the answer is no. Uh, the bird that I'm in front of right now is my favorite bird. And that's, <laughs> that's the way I, that's the way I feel about it. Um, I came up with the mentality of getting the best image of even the most common birds. Uh, I love photographing sparrows. I love photographing, you know, cardinals. And um, I hope you guys aren't hearing my little dog freak out running back and forth, but it's all good. It's mine. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I, for me, it's, it's whatever's in front of me. Uh, I don't, I have like no desire to like go out and find that one species. I photograph the great gray owls and I photograph bald eagles and um, you know, and I've photographed rare sparrows and to me, just being alone on the side of a pond, you know, photographing ducks kind of, that's just kind of my happy place where mm -hmm. just hear my breath and, and looking out over the top of my camera and watching the sunrise and getting that golden water. I love that. I absolutely love it. That's awesome. Yeah. No, no other place you'd rather be for sure. Indeed. Awesome. Well, as we're wrapping things up here, um, is there any like inspirational photographers you look up to or um, any shout outs or anything else you want to add? Ah, yeah. Any shout outs? Well, you know, I just, I want to, uh, I just want to everybody on Instagram that, you know, you just make contacts with and you share in these experiences with, you know, I can remember some of the very first people I uh, subscribe to, or what do you call it? You follow it on, on Instagram and um, you know, guys, you know, just like normal guys like Ken Goldman that's in, in Oregon, right? He's just a normal guy and he just takes beautiful images and, you know, and you, you see the, the brand and, you know, I don't even know what his last name is in Utah. And I, those guys every day, I get inspired by seeing some of those images. Um, there's no professional photographer out there that I'm like, oh, I want to be like that guy. I truly admire, you know, guys like me that are out there just kind of grinding every day. I'm saying because yeah that's not easy it's you know you got a family you got kids you got a job that you have to worry about I love that you know guys like us are still out there kind of grinding and putting in the time just to just to make a pretty image of a of a dang warbler you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I, I love that 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 inspires me more than anything um so that's you know that's who I want to give a shout out to all these normal dudes that are out there doing their best dudes and girls guys and girls that's awesome. awesome that's great awesome this has been a great conversation josh uh where can listeners go to learn more about your work well ryan i tell you know youtube is my favorite place if you want to know the most about me um i really peel back the curtains there uh, but if you just want to look at the picture of course instagram and it's by you underscore josh but youtube of course is by you josh and um love to have you come share in the experience with me it's it's a beautiful world out there Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for coming yeah. on. Yeah, yeah I appreciate so you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.